Hello, in this video we will be making an events system for the FNAF project. This will handle easter eggs like Golden Freddy crashes, hallucinations, poster changes and more. Here is a Golden Freddy example. At a random moment he appears and then we get a crash or game quit. Anyway, let's start with the framework. Right click, and find enum. Create an events enum to list your easter eggs. I will just add a few temporary ones such as Golden Freddy and It's Me. Next we want to make a structure to hold the enum and frequency and other event data. Which is in the same category as enums. You can customize your structure however you need, I will just be making it simple. Our first variable is name, the type is the enum that we just created. The next one will be levels. This will be a string type, this will be the list of levels the event can happen in, also make this an array type. Our next variable is the nights these events can appear in, this is an integer array. Our final variable is called frequency, it is a singular float, this will be our one all variable that controls how rare or common this event happens. With the structure created, we can create a data table with this. Go to your data tables folder and right click and create the data table. Select the structure that you created. Rename this dt underscore events. In here, you can start adding rows in, by pressing this button. If you double click the row name, you can rename it to your events name. Now below, we have the editor where we can pick our event type. We can then add in an element to the list. Name this the same as your map names. The levels section is important if you have various levels. This one needs to just be in the game map. We can then add elements to the night list and say I want this to have a chance to happen during nights 1 and 2. Then we give it a rarity number. I would say 0.25. Now you would do this for the other rows too. I will create one for the Golden Freddy event. Double click it and give it the name so you know later on. I skipped a bit to after I did the data. You can play around with this. I also added another row but you get the idea. Now let's just move on to making the manager actor. Create an empty blueprint actor. Name is events manager and then place it in the world. You can open up the actor after. Now we want to get a list of all our entries. I don't know if there are better ways for this but I just do get data table row names. Select your data table. Then right click that array and promote that array to a variable. Call it something easy to remember like event dt names or something. We want to create a custom event. Call that start event which will just start the timer for the event manager. Next, we want a variable, call it current event. It will be the type your event structure. We can then set it to nothing as a way to reset the event. We can call a set timer by event to call a new event every few seconds. I will also be promoting these to their variables. The values is going to be small for me as I am testing it but you can make it longer. From the event, call a create event. We will create a custom event called get event from table or something similar. Make sure that you set that correctly in the timer. Ok, so let's get a branch. Now our condition is a random boolean. Adjust the weight. Also you may need more random booleans depending on how rare you want these events or you could just adjust the weight to be really small. Since we are not looping the timer, we want to call the start event function again on false. Now we need to get a random event from the table, to do this, we can get our array variable. Do get array node dot and then the index will be a random integer in range. The max value will be the last index of that array variable. We can use this name, and from here get data table row. Connect it with rest of code and then select your data table. We can now set our current event to this data table our row. However, if row is not found, it will just call the start event function. Now from this current event, we need enough space and then add a branch. We have a few conditions the event needs to check before it can play that event. Also, our final custom event is playing the event. On true, call play event and on false call the start event. Also. I will rename start event to pre event setup. Now to deal with the branch, 
multiple conditions require an end node, get your current event and split the structure, our first condition is level name. Get current level name and then get contains dot array. This will check if the level is in that list. Next, check our knight. Same method. We get contains array. Get the game instance and if you have an interface event, get your current knight. We can link it up to the contains array, connect it to the branch and the end node. Our final condition is this float frequency. This is simply a random bool with weight. Now that's the setting up done. Now that the frame is done. We can get our current event, and split the structure. We can use this enum and do a switch on enum. Now, it has our events, now you can give it code however you want. Like a print string. Also add on a play sound at location. Then for the next event, you would do the same. If you want test to check if it works. Now I am going to show the Golden Freddy example. On the Golden Freddy, just add a quit game and delay. To make sure I only get the Golden Freddy example, I can just connect the custom event to the Golden Freddy code. Now we need Golden Freddy, right click and create actor. You could make this a part of your normal AI system which is the best way to do this. But for testing purposes, since this has no AI and just a fake event, Creating an actor with just a mesh is a better call. I don't have a mesh, so I will use Freddy in a gold material. Scale the mesh if needed. Now go back to your manager and just spawn actor from class. Select golden Freddy class and make sure collisions are set to always spawn and ignore collisions. Now, go to your spawn transform, and call a make transform node. Now to make a generic spawn point actor. Right click and create a blueprint actor. Then rename it to BP underscore spawn point. You can then place it in the world, at the correct location. I want it to spawn in front of the desk. To help with rotation, you can open up your spawn point. Add an arrow component to help know which way they face. After placing it properly, we can go back to our manager class. This is a bit messy but I will just add in a variable called Golden Freddy Spawn Point. Make it the type BP Spawn Point. Get the variable here. Then get the world rotation of the arrow component. Connect that return value to the rotation row. Then get actor location and connect it to the location row. Clean up your code, for testing, remember to disable the random bool's code. Now go to your Spawn Point variable and click on the I. Now in the world, if you click on your manager, you can select the spawn point. Now test the game. Anyway, that's the end. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and consider subscribing and sharing. See you next time.